Good morning, everyone. Welcome. My name is Terry K. Hill Griffin, and I am the vice chair of the undergraduate nursing program. Welcome to the UVM pinning ceremony. Yeah. Where we are gathered to celebrate the remarkable achievements of our graduating class of 2024. Today, we not only commemorate your academic accomplishments, but also honor your dedication, compassion, and unwavering commitment to the nursing profession. We have a few distinguished guests with us today. I would like to recognize Dr. Noma Anderson, Dean of the College of Nursing and Health Sciences. Dean Anderson, over here for everyone. Thank you, Dean, for joining us, as well as um, our amazing faculty seated here, particularly um, one of our faculty emeriti, Dr. Stuart Whitney, is joining us today. <laughs> and graduates, I'm sure you would all love to join me in a round of applause for your amazing faculty that got you here today. So as we reflect on the journey that brought us to this day, we cannot overlook the unique challenges and adversities that have defined the past few years. Beginning your college education in 2020 amidst a global pandemic undoubtedly tested your resilience, adaptability, and perseverance. You have navigated through some unprecedented circumstances, demonstrating remarkable courage and determination every step of the way. Despite these obstacles, You've remained steadfast in your pursuit of excellence, embracing the call to serve others with compassion and empathy. Your unwavering commitment to the nursing profession embodies that spirit of resilience that defines the University of Vermont community. Today, as we distribute your nursing pins, we not only acknowledge those academic achievements, but this also symbolizes your transition from students to healthcare professionals and colleagues. This pin holds a rich and fascinating history with layers of deep meaning. And I know there must be nurses in the room wearing your pins. Yeah, yeah, nurses wearing your pins. Yep, thank you. Thank you for all you do. So as you embark on this new chapter of your life, you're gonna remember these lessons learned, the challenges overcome, and the bonds that you forged along the way. Carry with you the values instilled by your education integrity, compassion, and that relentless pursuit of excellence. On behalf of the University of Vermont faculty, staff, and administration, I extend my heartfelt congratulations to each and every one of you. May you continue to inspire and make a difference in the lives of, in, in the lives of others, embodying the very essence of nursing excellence. Thank you. So now it is my honor to introduce your selected faculty speaker, Professor Miller Celestin. Wow. 
want to start off by saying good morning, everyone. It fills me with so much joy to see your beaming faces here today, all reflecting the same feeling, which is pride. I am so honored to be here today, and thank you for selecting me as your faculty speaker. As I look at your faces, I think back to our first class together. I started off with what I thought nursing was, and that's just difficult conversations with strangers, often on the worst day of their life. I also shared with you a story of a patient I cared for whose condition included every single disorder that you'll be learning in class that semester. But that wasn't the main part of the story. She was critically ill, but in her worst moment, all she thought about was her friends and her family, her relationships. That core message about her experience and what she prioritized highlights what I believe is the most important concept in existence and key to be what being a nurse is, relationships, family, friendships, acquaintances, romantic relationships. Those difficult conversations only work if you recognize the ability to form these relationships and acknowledge that each and every one of us are a product of these connections and they are vital to our health. The anthropologist Margaret Mead considered the first evidence of civilization to be a healed femur fracture that was 15,000 years old. For a person to survive a broken femur, which takes about six weeks to heal and is pretty painful, someone had to have provided shelter, protection, food. The person with the broken femur had to rely on others and the relationships they formed and were bound to. And those who cared for this person did this selflessly and at the risk of their own survival. I have to assume it was because they valued this person and they refused to leave them to die. Caring for others is what makes us human, and truly caring for others requires you to develop deep and meaningful relationships. This is the reason why you should see so much value in what you are doing. Nursing is what makes us human. It's something that allows us to not only survive, but to thrive. Now, for these conversations to work, in order for these relationships to be formed, there needs to be a mix of intentional acts, one being love. Love is defined in many ways, but the best definition I found is the will to extend oneself for the purpose of nurturing one's own or another's spiritual growth. It is both an, in, an intention and an action. Will to extend, that implies choice. We choose to love. Love allows us to feel as if we belong and are safe within these relationships. And this is what you must hold on to every single day as a nurse and in every relationship you have. It also requires empathy, empathy as an intentional act. Empathy is excitement that comes from our interest in one another and hearing one another's voices and recognizing one another's presence. So be excited about the people around you. Listen to everything they have to say and even the things they don't say. You also must be intentionally patient, intentionally selfless, selfless, intentionally kind. These acts, they determine your character, and your character is determined by your consistency. I'm sure all of you have heard that nursing is a profession of compassion, but this isn't true without intention, conviction, action. Make the choice every day to do good for the sake of humanity. Make the choice to be a person of strong character because you will attract positive relationships and then you can be the one that others turn to and rely on in times of need. Now, how do you begin to build these relationships? Just take cues from the examples before you. You are the product of these relationships you have come into throughout your lives. And those relationships would not work without everything that I just described. The first relationships were with your family. Whether from birth or the family you came into, those that are here for you, they cared for you. They built you up into the amazing people that you are today. They gave you the template for fostering positive relationships. We cannot be fully human without the sustenance of this first attachment. Those bonds model the relationships you formed with yourselves and with one another. You studied together, laughed together, cried together, cheered one another on. I'm sure you all remember in the hallways before your health assessment um, <laughs> test outs. Some of you even married one another. Throughout your time here, you built strong bonds, and even if you never see the person sitting next to you today, after today, you are always connected. The relationship with yourself is vital. This defines who you are, what you value. And even though it may change over time, this is crucial to you being able to connect with others. 
So how amazing is it that nursing is what makes us human, what makes society thrive, what makes a civilization? It's also heartbreaking when I realize that this care has to be provided in the face of a mountain of inequities in a healthcare system that does not truly prioritize health or well-being. Somewhere in the last 15,000 years, we lost a script on what it means to be human within our system. We have idealized relationships in principle, but disregarded them in reality. We lost the ability to empathize. We lost the ability to practice with love. We prioritize profits instead of human connections. We have stripped rights away from others, silenced marginalized voices, despite the massive contributions they have made to our society. We cannot accept that this is the way things should be. Everything you have learned over the past four years was to arm you with the tools and knowledge necessary to push back. Just as you build relationships with intention, you push back on these trends with intention. Conviction, the intention of doing or saying what is right in the face of resistance, the intention to end unjust domination and oppression, the intention of asserting yourself to protect your patients in a system that is stacked against them. Whether it be in quiet rooms where it's just you and your patient and their family, in leadership positions, in a room full of nurses, at the nurse's station, as a senior nurse, which you soon will be preparing the next generation of nurses, every act, every word, every decision must be intentional if we want to restore the values that make us human. Will it be exhausting? Yes. Will there be days where you wonder if this is worth it? Absolutely. But remember that you are here today because of the power of human connections. That was an intentional act, so your practice must be intentional. Your ability to empathize and to love must be intentional. Always fostering a connection with a person who is in front of you, sometimes for a reason that you never thought was possible, sometimes for a reason that has nothing to do with healthcare. So remember this when you look into the eyes of someone who's having their best day or their worst day. All they want is a human connection. A society that forgets this or where everyone is only looking out for themselves is bound to fail. And with that, I continue a tradition at UVM for nursing students. I share with you my final poem. <laughs> Don't worry, there's no exam after this. <laughs> um, it has been an incredible honor being your professor and um, I, am, I am so proud of you all. Um, from the nerves of day one to the confidence of today. I would, those of you who I've had in clinical, remember I told you be confident and I said that to the whole class and I've seen that come out and I'm so, so proud of you. So this tradition has been passed on to me by virtue of relationships. And this is Love After Love by Derek Walcott, which is about loving yourself. Because throughout all the relationships that you, ha that you have, they build up who you are, but you also have to remember to always love yourself. The time will come when with elation, you will greet yourself arriving at your own door, in your own mirror, and each will smile at the other's welcome and say, sit here, eat. You will love again the stranger who was yourself. Give wine, give bread, give back to your heart, to itself, to the stranger who has loved you. All your life whom you, whom you ignored for another, who knows you by heart. Take down the love letters from the bookshelf, the photographs, the desperate notes. Peel your own image from the mirror. Sit, feast on your life. Thank you. So. Um, I had just a few more words. <laughs> Thank you. Just a few more final words. <laughs> Um, I said there would be no exam. I should have said there's some more, some, some few words after the um, poem. So just remember, today your nursing journeys begin, but you have been on this relationship journey your entire life. Now it's time to put the two together and be the difference maker in the lives of everyone that you cross paths with from here on out. Thank you.
Um, and now we will begin with the calling of the names for pens. Now for the fun part. Not that that wasn't amazing. Thank you, Miller. Okay, stop. <laughs> All right, um, so to proceed with the pinning portion of the ceremony, uh, the presentation of students will be led by Professor Brandon Brown, who will be reading the names, and the distribution of the pins, um, Dr. Kathleen Mountford. Eh? So, so. All right, let's get started. All right, um, the moment everyone has been waiting for has arrived. It's my honor to welcome uh, the students to the stage to gather their pin. Um, as you approach the stage, I ask that you tell me your name. <laughs> I am really slowly so I can get it and make sure I pronounce it correctly. Um, also, the person who is pinning you, um, bring them up along with you. If your graduate is getting pinned up here, feel free um, you know, to come up to, up to the front here, take photos if you wish. Um, this is really an open sort of family uh, style thing. All right, so we're going to get started. So a big round of applause for our 2024 graduates. All right, I would like to welcome Grace Adamzak being pinned by someone who is very near and dear to us as well, our own Christina Adamzak, her mother. I'd like to welcome Trevor Albano being pinned by his father, Tom Albano. I'd like to welcome Amelia Allen being pinned by our own faculty, Tyler Mullier. I'd like to welcome Austin Archambault being pinned by her cousin, Kylie. I'd like to welcome Ian Albach being pinned by his mother, Kristen. I'd like to welcome Claire Bader, being pinned by her parents, Susan and Bob. Okay, all right. I'd like to welcome Giovanna Bader, being pinned by her mother, Kara. I'd like to welcome Samantha Baum being pinned by her parents, Donna and Jonathan. I'd like to welcome Jenna Bears being pinned by her mother, Lee.
I'd like to welcome Caitlin Bickert, being pinned by her grandparents, Jean and Lyle. Okay. Okay, I would like to welcome two very special people to the stage who are going to be pinning each other. Um, husband and wife, Amelia Blaze and Michael Blaze. I would like to welcome Ellie Bordeaux, who is being pinned by her sister, Emily. I'd like to welcome Daniel Bouvier, who is being pinned by his brother, Matthew. I'd like to welcome Olivia Bo Shulman, who is being pinned by her moms, Doreen and Mary. Sorry. All right, I would like to welcome to the stage Lydia Bushy, who is being pinned by her father, Lewis. I would like to welcome Emily Buckley, who is being pinned by her parents, Antoinette and Francis. I would like to welcome Grace Buzzle, who is being pinned by her parents, Stephanie and Tom. I'd like to welcome Corinna Katamatori being pinned by her mom, Emily. I'd like to welcome Gabriella Caforia being pinned by her mom, Lynn, and her friend, Emily. Oh, that's her sister, Emily. You're welcome. I'd like to welcome Jared Carr, who is being pinned by his mother, or Elizabeth, sorry. <laughs> I'd like to welcome Amber Casado, who is being pinned by her mom, Alexandra. I'd like to welcome Grace Caswell, who is being pinned by her mom, Bridget.
I would like to welcome Christiana Ciceri, who is being pinned by her dad, Lou. I'd like to welcome Hallie Chupp, who's being pinned by her mom, Leanne. I'd like to welcome Megan Clavel, who is being pinned by her mom, Kathy, and her dad, Greg. I'd like to welcome Emma Cochran, who is being pinned by her mom, Joanna. I'd like to welcome Jordan Carrado, who is being pinned by her brother, Jake. I'd like to welcome Eliza Cassell, who is being pinned by her friends Isabel, Madeline, and Anika. I'd like to welcome Anna Creed, who is being pinned by her best friend, Alyssa. I would like to welcome Megan Curran, who is being pinned by her dad, Tom. I'd like to welcome Olivia Cudicelli, who is being pinned by Sydney and Carly. I'd like to welcome Paige Cutting, who is being pinned by her parents, Justin and Lynn. I'd like to welcome Alexa Dargie, who is being pinned by her parents, Dave and Suzanne. I'd like to welcome Nicole DeMeo, who is being pinned by her parents, Richard and Kelly. I'd like to welcome Madeline Doherty, who is being pinned by her dad, Chris.
I'd like to welcome Paige DeManico, who is being pinned by her sister, Megan. I'd like to welcome Lauren Doherty, who is being pinned by their sister, Samantha. I'd like to welcome Casey Dockney, who is being pinned by her parents, Shannon and Joe. I'd like to welcome Marissa Drapeau, who is being pinned by her friend Sophie. I'd like to welcome Ansley Easterwood, who is being pinned by her parents Liza and Daryl. I'd like to welcome Lauren Elrod, who is being pinned by her parents, Ali and Scott. I'd like to welcome Emma Farnsworth, who, far, excuse me. I'd like to welcome Emma Farnsworth, who is being pinned by her mother, Barbara. I'd like to welcome Francesca Francisco, uh, Francisco, who is being pinned by her sister Ashley and her friend Chani. I'd like to welcome Hannah Fruru, who is being pinned by her parents, Donna and Phil. I'd like to welcome Gianna Gagnon, being pinned by her parents, Jenny and Paul. I'd like to welcome Kayla G uh, Gallolini, uh, being pinned by her grandfather, Matthew. I'd like to welcome Jacob Geisler being pinned by his dad, David. Yeah. 
I'd like to welcome Connor Giese, who is being pinned by his mom, Kim. I'd like to welcome Portia Gilbert, who is being pinned by her sister, Kendall. I'd like to welcome Allie Gordon, who is being pinned by her mom, Carrie. I'd like to welcome Prajal Garung being pinned by his parents, BJ and Nir. I'd like to welcome Sophie Hogwitz, who's being pinned by her parents, Patrick and Darlene. No worries. I'd like to welcome Corinne Hawkins, who's being pinned by her grandma, Carol, who has been a nurse for 31 years. I'd like to welcome Eve Holbrook, who is being pinned by her dad, uh, Andrew. I'd like to welcome Carly Hottenstein, who is being pinned by her mom, Dominica, and her friend, Fiona. I'd like to welcome Kate Shu, who is being pinned by her mom, Rachel, who is a nurse. <laughs> I'd like to welcome Haley Ingram, who is being pinned by her twin sister, Maddie. I'd like to welcome Ella Johnson, who's being pinned by her Nana, Barbara. <laughs> I'd like to welcome Alyssa Johnson, who is being pinned by her best friend, Anna. <laughs> I would like to welcome Marie Kelly, who is being pinned by her mother, Linda. I 
I'd like to welcome Jennifer Ladd, who is being pinned by our own Kathleen Monforti. I'd like to welcome Carolyn LaFountain, who is being pinned by her mom, Audrey. I'd like to welcome Ava Laporte, who is being pinned by her sister, Annette. I'd like to welcome Joe LeClaire, who is being pinned by his mom, Louise. I'd like to welcome Michelle Lee, who is being pinned by her mom, Jeanette. I'd like to welcome Isabel, Isabel Lascarbo being pinned by her parents, Paul and Nisa. I'd like to welcome Kate Lynn, who is being pinned by our own Dr. Kathleen Monforti. <laughs> I'd like to welcome Reagan Lockhart, who is being pinned by her grandma, Pauline. I'd like to welcome Catherine Logal, who is being pinned by her mom, Nancy, who is a nurse. I'd like to welcome Lauren Laverti, who is being pinned by her sister, Hannah. I'd like to welcome Morgan Link, who is being pinned by her grandpa, Scott. I'd like to welcome Barbara Kate McMaster, who is being pinned by her mom, Jo. I'd like to welcome Rachel Malpass, who is being pinned by her dad, Trey.
I'd like to welcome Olivia Mateus, who is being pinned by her dad, Michael. I'd like to welcome Mason Mazarana being pinned by their dad, Ed. I would like to welcome Josephine Moulton, who is being pinned by her father, Kevin, her mom, Celeste, and her sister, Meredith. All right. I would like to welcome Riley Mullock, who is being pinned by Ellen, uh, who is one of our alumni from our UVM nursing program, and her dad, Walter. <laughs> I'd like to welcome Camille Nichols, who is being pinned by her mom, Elizabeth. All right, I'd like to welcome Sheridan Nozzle, who is being pinned by her Grammy Jill and her parents, Wendy and Mike. All right. I would like to welcome Sydney Nozzle, her twin sister, who is also being pinned by her Grammy Jill and her parents, Wendy and Mike. <laughs> I'd like to welcome Katie Noyes, uh, who is being pinned by her mom, Kathy, and her aunt, Donna, who are both nurses. I'd like to welcome Maura O'Connor, who is being pinned by her mom, Julie. I'd like to welcome Lindsay Oliveira, being pinned by her parents, Pam and Todd. All right. 
I'd like to welcome Sophie O'Neill, who is being pinned by her best friend, Marissa. I'd like to welcome Quinn O'Reilly, who is being pinned by his brother, Colin. I'd like to welcome Isabel Ostrowski being pinned by her stepmom, Carrie, who's also a nurse. I'd like to welcome Lauren Owens, who is being pinned by her parents, Tracy and Steve. I'd like to welcome Chandra Perro, who is being pinned by her dad, Eric. I'd like to welcome Melissa Peter Tonjes, being pinned by her parents, Eric and Sandra. I'd like to welcome Lily Porth, who is being pinned by her family friend, Amy, who is also a nurse. I'd like to welcome Serena Power being pinned by her mom, Veronica, who is also a nurse. I'd like to welcome Madeline Prouty, who is being pinned by her sister, Vivian. I'd like to welcome Brooke Raymer, who is being pinned by her mom, uh, Randy, and her dad, Chad. I'd like to welcome Anika Randall, being pinned by her sister, Amy, who is also a nurse. I'd like to welcome Ellie Restrepo being pinned by her mom, Robin. I'd like to welcome Garrett Rice being pinned by his mom, Stacy.
I'd like to welcome Gabrielle Roberts being pinned by her mom, Yi. I'd like to welcome Jenna Rogers being pinned by her mom, Amy. I'd like to welcome Amanda Shapiro being pinned by her parents, Alexis and John. I'd like to welcome Hannah Sheridan, who is being pinned by her dad, Scott, her mom, Joanne, and her brother, Riley. I'd like to welcome Casia Smith being pinned by her mom, Nikisha, and her aunt, Trisha, who is also a nurse. I'd like to welcome Sophia Stampaglia being pinned by her uncle Dave, who is also a nurse. I'd like to welcome Samantha Stillman being pinned by her dad, Adam, who is also a nurse and wearing his nursing pin. I'd like to welcome Lee Tang, who is being pinned by his uncle, Sony. I'd like to welcome Catherine Violet being pinned by her mom, Beth. I'd like to welcome Samantha Wagner being pinned by her mom, Beverly. <laughs> I'd like to welcome Emma Whitney who is being pinned by her mom, Maureen.
I'd like to welcome Lucy Wilson, who is being pinned by her father, Jason. I'd like to welcome Caroline Weimer, who is being pinned by her mom, Karen. I'd like to welcome Grace Cedar Gerst, being pinned by her parents, Chris and Scott. All right, how about a big round of applause for our 2024 <laughs> graduates? I'll welcome you back up. Um, thank you, everyone. I would now like to welcome the student speaker for today, Quinn O'Reilly, um, to come up onto the stage. Thank you, Professor Brown. You're welcome. It's a lot scarier now that I'm behind the podium. Before I get going, I just want to ask you all to join me in a round of applause for the wonderful faculty and staff of the College of Nursing. My name is Quinn O'Reilly, and I've had the profound pleasure to learn alongside your daughters, sons, sisters, brothers, and friends during my time here at UVM. I want to thank my classmates for selecting me to speak at this ceremony. We did it, guys. We made it. I had a great time learning and growing alongside you all. I want to thank you for electing me to speak at this ceremony on your behalf. I am honored. Let's hope I don't disappoint. <laughs> Nursing school here at UVM means that our cohort took the vast majority of our classes together. We would break off into smaller groups for scientific labs and clinical. This format allowed us to get acquainted much faster and much more intimately than we would take classes as other university students. It allowed us to form deeper connections with more of our classmates. Wherever we went, we were likely to find a familiar and friendly face. As such, graduation leaves us with a bittersweet feeling, knowing that our class will no longer be returning to UVM next year for more classes together, but instead out into the world. Naturally, people that grow together celebrate together. We had a nursing cohort soiree last week that was a wonderful way to bring the class together outside of the classroom for some much deserved fun after a hard four years. We had the privilege to be educated by some absolutely wonderful people here at UVM. Our professors showed nothing but professionalism and frequently shared their pearls of wisdom with us. They were kind, approachable, knowledgeable, and enthusiastic about teaching us. Additionally, during our time here at UVM, we had access to phenomenal academic and scientific resources to aid our learning. We had access to the most up-to-date research databases, advanced clinical training simulations, a state-of-the-art hospital, and classroom seats from 1971. <laughs> Thank you. 
The only thing any of us would change about nursing school is just an upgrade to the seats, but they're already on it, they're already on it. <laughs> clinical was another interesting part of nursing school that challenged us during our time here. Though clinical is an integral element of nursing school and key for the creation of new nurses, not many other college students get to pay to work a part-time job. <laughs> it was difficult, especially with many of us working jobs on the side to make ends meet. But as with all difficult tasks, it was exceptionally rewarding. My classmates and I would sometimes have views of the other UVM students walking through the campus green as we tended to our patients. I couldn't help but think that clinical was an exceptional way to spend a school day. Instead of heading to lecture, we were immersed in our field of study, scrubbing in on surgeries, caring for people from all walks of life, and inevitably getting lost in the hospital. <laughs> but it was truly a blessing to have the ability to interact deeply with only a few patients at a time, to give all of our attention to them and really listen to their story and tend to their needs. Clinical, edu clinical education was a very transformative and enlightening element of our time here. If there are any clinical faculty present today in the audience, I want to express thanks on behalf of our class. Before my time here, I served four years in the Marine Corps. I would like to highlight some of the similarities between the Marine Corps and nursing school. <laughs> there are some, there are some. The Marines have three core values that guide their direction and their actions. These core values are honor, courage, and commitment. It is my belief that nurses also abide by this set of core values. Honor. Honor is what guides us to live by the highest level of ethical and moral behavior that we can muster, to abide by a code of respect and integrity. Though our time here was short, we did much. We swaddled babies just hours old, and we held the hands of those in their final hours of life. During clinical, we experienced what it meant to be a nurse to be someone that advocates for their patients' physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual or religious needs. To be someone that goes to great lengths to ensure that those who have been entrusted to our care are treated with dignity, respect, and honor. Courage. Courage is the strength found in the face of adversity. Courage of mental, physical, and emotional nature. Courage carries us through the challenges we face it is the strength that we summon from within that enables us to overcome the austere conditions around us. These young men and women sitting before you today chose to enter healthcare during a time of global uncertainty, change, and loss. Yet in the face of uncertainty, in the midst of a global pandemic, they chose to answer the call. They did not stray or opt for a profession that demanded less of them. Instead, they chose to walk a narrow and arduous path to claim their rightful place among the nurses of this country and to use their hands to help mend this world. And finally, commitment. A commitment to the patient, to embody the spirit of dedication and determination. We're making a commitment to do no harm, to serve for the good of others, to be truthful and fair, and to provide the patient with the information required for maximal autonomy. By joining the ranks of our professors and clinical instructors, we are adopting a responsibility to act forthrightly in order to facilitate the creation of a better tomorrow through the amelioration of sickness and ailment. We may stumble, but we will continue to strive valiantly forward. To my classmates, congratulations. I am humbled and honored to have grown alongside of you all. I look forward to see where your lives and where your work take you. Thank you. God bless. Class of 2024, you chose your speakers really well. Some inspiring words today. Thank you again to Professor Miller Celestin and to Quinn. Awesome, and I thank you both. So, in closing, I again offer my congratulations to you, the class of 2024.
Continue to strive for excellence in all that you do. Never cease to learn, to grow, and to advocate for those in your care. And may you always carry with you the values of compassion, integrity, and service that are at the heart of nursing. That concludes our event today. Enjoy your afternoon, and we will see you all tomorrow. Congratulations.